Hey friend, today we're going to look at 17 attractive ways to organize your book collection. So I just want to set the expectations straight away so that you can decide whether or not you're interested in actually watching this video. This is not going to be a video about how to style a shelfie. This is a video about how to organize a large-ish book collection. Some methods in today's video are going to be a little bit more visual and others are more practical. So just skip the ones you don't like and hopefully you'll find something that does work for you and your situation. The challenging thing about having a large book collection is that you want to know what you have, but you also want to be able to easily access things. When you add to the equation the problem of wanting to make things actually look nice, that's where things can get a little challenging. But fortunately, there are a bunch of ways that you could do this. Like I said before, a few of the book organization ideas in this video are super controversial in the book lovers community as they favor form over function. So just ignore the ones you don't like. The great thing is, is that there's no right or wrong way to organize your books. You can do whatever you want and whatever feels right to you. If you can find what you need on your shelves and you're happy with how it looks, then that's great. That's all that matters. What I do hope though, is that everyone can find a method of organizing their books that they like. It might actually even be a combination of more than one method. So before you start beautifying and organizing your book collection, you need to assess what you have. I have a few tips to get you going. The first tip is to empty your bookcase or bookcases. If you really want to take this whole book organization thing by the horns, then you just got to go in and do it. Empty it all out, give your bookshelves a good wipe down, blow the dust off your books and reassess your empty space with fresh eyes. Tip number two, edit your collection. Channel your inner Mary Kondo and ask yourself if you really want each book that you have. It's totally fine if you do, but it's helpful to just look through what you have and decide if it's worth keeping. Ask yourself why you're keeping the book. Do you want to read it again? Do you want to gift it to someone? Have you not read it yet? Is it sentimental? Ask yourself these questions when deciding what to keep in your collection. Tip number three, decide where you're going to keep your collection. Will it be in the same place as it always has been? Do you have a new place in mind for it? Do you need to buy new bookshelves? Do you have enough space? Do you need to protect any of your books from dust? Are they antiques? You might need a cabinet with a glass door, which would help with dust protection. You might even need UV glass to protect antique books from harmful UV rays. There's a lot of things to consider. So if you have books with less than stellar looking dust jackets, consider removing them. Often the book covers underneath the dust jackets are a nice solid cotton. In the case of this book, check it out. Like how much better does this look than this? If you're not concerned about reading what's on the back or maintaining any of the information, this can look a lot better on your shelf, especially if you do it to all your books. I would only get rid of the dust jackets if you're absolutely sure you're never going to put them back on the books again. If you think you're going to change your mind six months down the road and you want to put them back on, definitely don't throw them out. Do you have a favorite bookstore that you return to time after time? What is it about that particular store that appeals to you? Go back and take a look at how they display their collection. Make note of how it's organized and if they display books in a certain way that you like. It might not just be about the books themselves. Maybe the type of shelves they use speaks to you. Or perhaps they created a cozy reading nook somewhere in the store that you could also try to recreate yourself. Maybe they have plants and succulents mixed in amongst their books. Analyze what you like and see if you can translate some of that back into your own home. This can be organizing by author, by genre, by fiction versus nonfiction, by classics versus modern literature, cookbooks, travel books, art books. You get the idea. Do whatever your internal librarian desires. For books that you need to be semi-accessible, store them in large matching baskets on the bottom shelf. You can do this with any books that are ugly, tattered, or for whatever reason you just don't want to display. Make sure you choose a color palette for your storage. If you have a bunch of mismatched baskets and boxes, it's not going to help you out in your quest for a beautiful and organized bookshelf. Aim for cohesion. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but hardcover books tend to look a bit neater on shelves than paperback books. Paperbacks get, they just, they look messier after you read them. They get bent, they, the pages fray, they just look a little, I mean, this one looks okay, but in general, they look a little bit messier once you've read it a couple times. Hardcover books tend to look a bit neater. So on the shelves, you could try separating your hardcovers from your paperbacks. 
You don't have to create a literal rainbow of books, although that can look amazing. You can simply opt for arranging your books in groups of hues that look nice together. For example, you could keep pastel colored books in a group, keep warm toned covers in a group, and keep black, whites, and grays in another group. Whatever color combination you choose to display your books in, you can be sure that it will create a lovely statement bookshelf that is visually very pleasing. Whether or not it's easy to quickly find the titles you want is another matter. I think it's strangely satisfying when I see a neat row of books that fills up an entire shelf. But if that's not your cup of tea, then try breaking up your row by adding stacks of books in horizontal piles. This helps add some visual interest as you can create different heights and then place decor items on top of your stacks. Stacking is also a great way to store your magazine collections. If you choose to go with this painfully lengthy but visually cohesive method, you can use any kind of paper or fabric, whatever has a look that you find attractive. You might also have to create homemade labels for each book. The cheapest and easiest way to do this is to grab some Avery labels and a thin Sharpie, write the title on the label and slap it on the spine. You could also just recover a portion of your books if you don't have the patience, time or willpower to recover all of them. It's usually a good idea to place your larger books, like these ones, at the bottom of your bookshelf. Visually, it's a little bit more balanced if you have bigger items at the bottom, because otherwise, like top-heavy things look a bit weird sometimes. If you are someone that remembers titles and authors better than colors, this method will probably work better for you. You can do alphabetical by author or alphabetical by title. If this sounds like a good method for you, but you feel overwhelmed because you have too many books to alphabetize, you can check out this video by the TED Ed channel where they show you the fastest way to alphabetize your bookshelf. They managed to alphabetically sort almost 1300 books in just three and a half hours. If you have a lot of books that are all the same size and height, group those together. Try to create a row of books that are all the exact same height. It'll look seriously uncluttered and super clean. I recommend doing this only once you've placed all your books out. After you've organized everything to your liking, try introducing decor items amongst your books wherever there's an empty space. A good rule of thumb is to never add any items that are smaller than an orange. Anything too small will just make the shelf look cluttered. Adding two rows of books per shelf will really maximize your shelf space and can create a beautiful layered look. The obvious drawback is that the books in the back row will be a lot more difficult to see and access. Look away now if you're a die-hard bibliophile who needs to see every title in your collection. The backwards books method, which means basically all the book binds facing the wall, is purely for aesthetic purposes, but it can really help tie a bookshelf together, especially when you have a collection of mismatched book colors, sizes, and thicknesses. If you have several books lined up that you're planning on reading but struggle to locate them in your collection, this is a great idea. You could have a dedicated section where you group all your future reads, new purchases, or anything you're planning on reading in the near future. A nice way to do this is by placing them in a rolling cart or in a basket. Don't push your books all the way back. This is just a small detail, but it's good to keep in mind. If you have deep bookshelves, you might be tempted to push your books all the way back until they touch the back of the shelf or the wall. Try not to do this. Instead, keep the spines close to the edge of the outside edge of the shelf. By doing this, more light will hit the spines and it will be much easier to see what you have. Visually, your books will also appear to be tidier and will be easier to access. Inspire your kids to grow up with a love and appreciation of reading by creating a mini library in their own bedroom. One thing I love about kids' books is that they usually have really fun book covers, so don't be afraid to put those bright colors and quirky designs on display. If you're wondering how to store children's books, there are many creative ways to arrange them besides using a standard bookshelf. You'll still want to make sure your child can actually access his or her books, so opt for lower storage solutions so that their book treasures are always readily accessible. You can use floating shelves, picture ledges, a vintage steamer trunk, baskets, a rolling cart, plastic bins, spice racks, cube storage units, over-the-door fabric organizers. I've linked a lot of these products down below if you're interested in checking them out. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you took something away from today's video and that it inspired you to organize your books in a new way or in a better way. And if not, let me know how you organize your books at home. Is there a method that I didn't think of that you use? 
Anyways, that's it for today. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.